For the past year, I've been using the MacBook Air 15 for running the business aspects of my YouTube channel. So things like answering emails, doing the benchmarks, even editing thumbnails. And while I'm on the go, for instance, at CES, I was editing 6K footage on my MacBook Air 15. And it was not until the Asus VivoBook S14 OLED came out that I considered a real competitor for the MacBook Air 15. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through the different reasons why I think that this laptop finally chucks an ax toward the MacBook Air 15 as being the perfect alternative for somebody who wants to stay in the Windows ecosystem, but wants all the flash, bang, and hype that surrounds the MacBook Air 15. Let's dive into it. First and foremost, I had not seen a laptop that had the simplicity and build quality that I have seen in my MacBook Air 15. When you look at the laptop, you see a very nice black finish, simple Asus Vivo book on the top cover, and a very nice simple design on the bottom cover with a nice large vent. So it gets good ventilation and provides a good performance. Now the speakers are one area that I would say the MacBook Air still wins out on. I'll do a quick speaker sample between my MacBook Air and this laptop just so you can check it out. Now, one area that absolutely dominates the MacBook Air would be the port selection. You have a micro SD card reader, so you can easily expand your storage, two USB type C's, HDMI, headphone jack, as well as two USB type A's. So what this provides us is far better connectivity. If you wanna hook up external monitors, you have two USB type C's and an HDMI to hook up three external monitors rather than the one to two external monitors that you can hook up on the MacBook Air. So it's really cool to see expanded abilities to have more of a workstation with using this device. Now, similar to the MacBook Air, you're unable to upgrade the RAM on the device. So keep in mind, whatever the device comes with, in this case, 16 gigs of RAM, that will not be upgradable. However, the 16 gigs of RAM that it comes with is higher than the traditional baseline MacBook Air at eight gigs of RAM. It also comes with a one terabyte SSD, where the MacBook Air comes with a 256 at the base level, 512 and then one terabyte. So right off the bat, you're already saving over $700 by going with the 14 as opposed to the 13 inch MacBook Air. It's almost half the price. Now, one thing from a OCD perspective that kind of annoys me is the fingerprints. So you're gonna to wanna to keep a cloth with you if you don't like to find fingerprints on your device as a collect rather easily on this black finish. So just keep that in mind. Now, going ahead and opening and closing the lid with one hand is really easy. It's a nice light top cover. And then checking out the screen flex, it's a nice rigid screen, not too much flex. And then checking out the screen bounce, it does have a bit of bounce. So if you're somebody who's using this laptop as you're commuting a lot, perhaps you're always flying around on an airplane, you're riding on a train, you're in the back of an Uber. So the screen does have a little bounce, but it steadies out rather quickly. Now you do have a manual cutoff switch for the webcam, which I really like the manual cutoff switch because I can see for sure that it is off. The MacBook Air 13 and 15 do not have that. This is the webcam on the Asus VivoBook S14 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. This is the webcam on the Apple MacBook Air 15 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now looking at the keyboard, we do have a nice large trackpad. This is a manual click trackpad. The haptic trackpads are good, but for somebody like my wife, she absolutely cannot stand it. She can't get the click right. It just really frustrates her. So if you're in her boat, the regular standard manual click trackpad is here on this laptop and makes for a very nice experience. It's quiet and really nails each click just right. Now, looking at the keyboard, we have a medium key travel. This is not an ultrabook keyboard. You know, something like the MacBook Air, we're gonna have that very thin keyboard and it can create a less than desirable type of experience for somebody who's used to a longer key travel. So nice medium key travel, you have full size shift keys, your arrow keys, and you have your Microsoft Copilot button right on the keyboard so you can tap into your AI assistant. This is super awesome for consolidating meeting notes. So let's say you had a really long two hour meeting, heaven forbid, but let's say you did and you have to report to your manager or to somebody else on your team what happened to that meeting. You can have your Copilot automatically categorize all those notes and really simplify it 
even for yourself, it's awesome. I love that tool. I am developing something with Lori from Tech Notice and being able to have our entire conversation boiled down into some simple notes is fantastic. So I love having Microsoft Copilot super accessible to me. And of course, here's a sample of the trackpad and the keyboard in use so you can hear what that sounds like so you can hear the noise differences. Now the screen is something that is fantastic and at the price point. Like I said, this laptop is right around $1,000 and you're getting a display that is 100% sRGB, 98% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 1.16. On top of that, it's a 1920 by 1200 display that reaches 393 nits at full screen brightness. So that is, that is crazy. Laptops at this price point, a couple of years ago would have had a like 65% sRGB. So it's just amazing at how much bang for buck you're getting with this laptop. And it comes with one of the best CPUs that Intel currently offers for their ultra low power systems, the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. And it's like, this is all at $1,000. It's crazy. It's not cheap, of course. There are cheap laptops that will not get you the performance this one will get. Talk about that in just a minute. But all this packaged up into $1,000 is incredible. Like again, it's $700 less than the equally spec'd MacBook Air 13. So there's three listings currently available for the VivoBook S14. You can see we have the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, 899 for this product. It's a great price point for, for this laptop. Even better than advertised in my thumbnail and in my video that I've been talking about. Um, now you go to Walmart and you're gonna have that same price that I've been talking about, that around $1,000 price point. Uh, and then you go to Newegg and same thing, it's gonna be around that $1,000 price point. But uh, according to when I'm watching this video, when I'm recording it, $899 for the Asus Vivo Book. Absolutely amazing. You can see all of them are 16 gigs of RAM, so the RAM isn't the change. It's simply uh, Amazon having the best price at this moment. Check the links in the description for the live pricing. Maybe different from when I recorded this video. And if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Now, like I mentioned earlier, the laptop is so thin and light. It weighs in at just under three pounds, 1.31 kilograms, and it is just over a half an inch thick. It's crazy. Now, by far, what makes this laptop really stand out to me is the battery life. For streaming video playback, we can get 13 hours of battery life. For productivity, that's maybe answering emails, doing research, creating benchmark charts is one thing I do a lot on my laptop. You're gonna get about 11 hours of battery life. So easily a full day's work out of this laptop. Now, if I'm gonna go ahead and jump into some thumbnail editing inside of Photoshop, I can get around seven hours of battery life, which is amazing. And then if I'm doing some video editing, around five hours of battery life. So that this laptop can take me on the go, editing my footage where I need, creating thumbnails, doing the business side of my work, and keep me on the road all day, it's fantastic. Now let's go ahead and check out the performance of this laptop. As a recap, again, we have a terabyte of storage, 16 gigs of RAM, and the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. You can see that in the simulated benchmarks, my 15 inch MacBook Air shows itself to be more powerful from a single core standpoint in Geekbench. However, in multi-core, you can see that the Vivo Book takes a step up with the Intel Core Ultra 9 and really tops out at 2000 points more than my MacBook Air. So multi-core performance is much higher. Now let's go ahead and get into the Photoshop benchmark. You can see that it's topping the charts out of the laptops I reviewed most recently, and it is blowing away the MacBook Air 15 by over a thousand points. So you can see that if you're using the Adobe Creative Suite, like Adobe InDesign, Photoshop, or Illustrator, or you're using things like Affinity Photo, you're gonna have way more performance out of the Asus VivoBook compared to the MacBook Air 13 or 15. Now keep in mind, I am using the M2 model, yet to review the M3. Now looking at the 4K export, that's a nine minute 4K clip placed into Premiere Pro, export out full quality 4K YouTube settings. I've yet to see a better result on my channel. Without a dedicated GPU, keep that in mind, 
Three minutes and 39 seconds out of this tiny little laptop with fantastic battery life, insane. Now, if I go ahead and look at drop frames in Premiere Pro, you can see that we have zero drop frames in 1080p, zero at 4K half quality, and only 31 at 4K full quality. So that's when you're playing back in the timeline and editing your footage. Now, looking at the various export times, you can see that even on battery power, you still only have three minutes and 46 seconds on the export time. A lot of times in the past Windows laptops, when you're plugged into power, you get excellent results, really fast export times. And then you unplug and the laptop's ability to access the full performance of the CPU in the device plummets dramatically. So you would have maybe a three minute and 39 second export time plugged into power, but then you unplug and it's all of a sudden becomes 10 minutes. That's not the case with the latest Vivo book in the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H. We're seeing nearly the same performance with plugged into charger and on battery power. Over the past year, I've been looking for a laptop that was on the go friendly, had incredible battery life, great performance, and didn't cost over $2,000. Because let's say for instance, the Samsung Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360 is a great laptop, but it ends up being over $2,000 at the point of purchase. And so for this laptop, we're at $1,000 and it gives you incredible performance. It's the perfect touch for on the go creators. Links in the description if you're ready to make a purchase or click or tap the screen here for more videos to help you with your buying decision. I'll see you in the next one.